Premiere Elements 2025 has been released and we'll go through its tutorial in this video. So, let us begin. The first thing we need to do is download the app. You can buy it from the website but uh, I'll download a 7 day free trial. Once done, open the installer. This screen might come and uh, you can ignore it by clicking run. The installer will open and we need to choose the language and the location. Then it will start downloading the app. Depending on the connection, this may take a few minutes. Once completed, this is the interface. From here we can open both Premiere and Photoshop elements. Let's open up our program. Click OK. I will click the free trial button. It will also bring another pop-up and we'll click on continue. This is the interface. Premiere Elements has three modes. Quick, Guided and Advanced. Quick is to do some quick edits. Guided has some tutorials to help you learn and do specific edits. You can download one and it will tell you what to do to get the same results. The Advanced is the real power of Elements and here we get full control. We'll also cover this mode in this video. You can switch to Dark mode from this button. Let's add some media. Click this plus icon. Then we'll choose the top files option. Pick the media to add. You can choose multiple by holding the control button. Here we go. This on the bottom is the timeline. Whatever is here will play here and will be in the final result. We can drag and drop a video to add to the project. When you add your first video, Premiere Elements creates a sequence based on that video's quality. Now if you delete this video, you will still have a sequence and if you place a different dimension video, it will ask you to keep the existing settings or change them to the new video. We can scroll on the timeline with the mouse. Use the Alt button and mouse to zoom in and out. The timeline has three video and audio tracks but we can add more if needed. Each track has a few options. Audio tracks can be muted and video tracks can be disabled. When you hover over the edge of a clip you'll notice a red icon. This lets you cut a clip by clicking the mouse button and then moving. You can also go the other way and bring back the already cut part. Then is this scissors icon. This will split the clip. We can split into pieces and delete the parts we don't need. To delete it, hit delete. You can also do shift delete for ripple delete which will automatically remove the deleted clip space. These two icons will select all the clips to the left or right. To the right are the tools. When a clip is selected, the first icon will show its controls. We can change its position, scale, rotation, anchor point, opacity and volume. We can also adjust the properties of any effect applied to this clip. In opacity, we get the blend mode to blend two videos. We'll add a few more things now. We can change the size of a clip by clicking it and then using those dots. We can also move a clip by dragging it. Text is a part of elements. To add simple text, click the text icon and then drag on the screen where you want to add. A text editor box will appear to type. On the left is the titles and shapes column to edit the text properties. We can change the font, font size, alignment, text style and more. In the appearance tab, you'll find the text color, stroke, background and shadow. Make sure you are in the edit section when a text is selected. When you add a new text, when a text is already selected in the timeline, elements won't create a new text. It will add both text in one element. You can resize and reposition both at the same time or individually by opening the properties of each. To add a new text separately, make sure no text is selected when you add a new text. In the template section, you'll find pre-made titles. We can search for something on the top. If you like something, drag and drop it onto the timeline. Almost all those are editable so you can change the text and stuff. Editing the actual design is a bit complicated but we can play with the properties to make that happen. 
Premier Elements can do stuff quickly with the help of its tools. The second icon has all of those. We can pan and zoom a clip. You can see Elements has already applied the effect but it's not the best. Thankfully we can edit the starting location and the ending location. This is the result. You can also color match two clips if a part of your video is differently recorded or the lighting was different. Go to select from timeline and pick when you want to copy the colors. You'll already see the preview. If you like it, hit continue. A few more options will appear to apply the effect to the entire timeline or just this clip. You can also adjust the color strength, saturation, hue and brightness. In color grading, we can make basic color adjustments. This includes exposure, saturation, contrast, whites, blacks and more. Effects are for different moods. There are lots here and we can drag and drop one. Each effect will be added in the effects panel where we can adjust its properties and stuff. There are a few audio effects as well if you want to try. Like the video, those have intensity and other options. Transitions are animations that play when moving from one clip to another. There are plenty here and we can drag and drop one between the clips. Then when you play, you'll see this effect. I like this dip to black effect and use it a lot. Each effect has the option to show it in the center, on the left clip or on the right clip. Elements has music. This panel has some tunes and you can play them and insert them into your project. When you do, you get a few options. You can adjust its intensity. However, this fit entire video is great as it fits the music until the end of the project. You can still manage this music from the effects panel. I will reduce the volume. Now to an advanced topic of video editing, it's a keyframe animation. Keyframe animation is animating stuff. For video clips, it would be moving them, rotating them, changing their size, etc. For this video, I let this sticker and move it around. In the effects control, whenever you see this timer clock, it means that this property can be changed in real time. At its start, we'll click the timer to create a keyframe. This will turn its color to blue. When you do, Elements knows that at this time its value should be this. Now we'll move the handle a bit further. If you change these values now, Elements will animate its position from its starting value to this. With these, we can move stuff, change audio volume in real time and adjust effects. At a single frame, if a keyframe exists, you'll see this small blue dot. You can change this property to something else if you don't like the current value. You can remove an animation by clicking the same clock icon. Elements also has this rectangle shape icon to draw boxes. Thirdly, if the app is slow or lagging, you can click the render button. This will render the existing content so the project won't consume many resources. Rendering the video will also help in exporting the video quickly. Lastly, click this export and share to export this video. You can upload it to social media but you need to sign in. The top is the name and click here to set a destination. Choose the quality. I think H.264 is good. I'll pick 1080 pixels. Then click export. Done. Our video is ready. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. Take care.